Dr. Mark Changizi here with your Science Moment. Today I'm going to talk about how memory is crucial for free expression and the manner in which free expression works at the network level, at the social network level, to help us converge towards the truth. Before I get started, I just want to remind you, we've got uh, Dr. Tim Barber and I have a new book called Expressly Human on the origins of emotional expressions and how emotional expressions undergird human communication. That's the real language that we have and how it's that times millions, the network of us, that is really what matters in terms of free expression, in terms of how society and even science moves towards the truth. So you can find that book for pre-order at Barnes Noble, Amazon, and so forth, uh, Expressly Human, Decoding the Language of Emotion. So today, talk about memory and how it's crucial. And what you know motivates us is that a lot of the folks who pushed for lockdowns and shutdowns and uh, had the mask science where suddenly they become useful and mask mandates and are the folks that supported um, measures such that your loved one died alone in the hospital rather than with family around. Uh, they pushed banishing and firing of the unvaccinated. They pushed the idea that the unvaccinated were unclean people and shouldn't even be allowed into hospital. Um, people are slowly but surely backing away from these positions, pretending that they weren't amongst the folks that pushes the, push these. Now, in the long run, you can forgive them. That's fine. What I'm about to say is not inconsistent with forgiveness. And ultimately, I think there's going to have to be some forgiveness. But that doesn't mean that you forget. Forgiving doesn't mean forget. And in fact, forgetting is exactly what you don't want. In order for social networks to work, now not only do you have to have free expression and no censorship and all these, these, these different kinds of things we talked about, but you also need memory for the obvious reason that without memory, you can't have folks that rise and fall in reputation because they only fall and rise in reputation in the minds across the network. It's those minds that keep track of who rises and who falls in a decentralized way. If it's the Alzheimer's wing of the old folks home, there are, there are no rises and falls of reputation. You can be a complete douchebag one day and no one has any idea that you're a douchebag. You don't lose any reputation. You can be the sweetest person in that wing of long-term care facility and it doesn't give you any enhanced uh, reputation. And similarly, if there are certain kinds of uh, things that they have to figure out as a group over time and find out which things are true in terms of the schedule or what's on Tuesdays for breakfast, um, they get no closer to the truth because they end up with no, you know, nobody ends up with higher reputations by virtue of their ability to predict these things or um, no one is remembering who in fact was able to predict them. So they end up with no greater ability to um, sway anybody than the folk that, folks that were always wrong. Memories are crucial to how society and science as a special case moves towards the truth. So don't feel bad if you're thinking to yourself, no, I'm, I'm going to remember all of these journalists and these public policy folks and these epidemiologists and these masters of public health and these, um, these doctors who got it completely wrong, became authoritarians when, when civil rights actually mattered, namely when there's a perceived emergency, they completely turned into authoritarians. Um, we're going to remember that. And we have to make sure that we remember that. We might forgive you and say, that's fine, look, but it's going to color how we judge the new statements that you make in the future. You know, you need not lose your job and so forth. You're still our friend, but dude, you know, you really made a big mistake and we're not going to forget that because that's not how free expression functions. It functions by remembering. Now, one thing we want to do at FreeX, um, also Dr. Tim Barber and I have this free expression institute called the Free Expression Group, freex.group. Memory doesn't work as well on social networks, on social media, as it does in a tribe where there's 300 or 500 folks. In those sorts of communities where we evolved, we're good at remembering who did what and who's risen, you know, rose and fall in reputation. It works very well. And it also works very well because people are able to bet reputation using emotional expressions and, and doing all of the kinds of things that we talk about are expressly human. Whereas on, on, the in, on the internet with social media, not only are the numbers way too big to possibly have memories of the reputations of all of these folks in our heads, but also the manners in which these communications are going back and forth are incapable of putting at stake reputation in the way that happens in the real world. One of the things that we're working on is how can social media be fixed to allow better memories by all of us individuals, not memories 
by you know the centralized memories we'd like it to be such that it, it promotes easier to remember uh, uh, so it makes it so that it's easier to remember for the masses to remember so that it's in in distribute decentralized manner distributed in the heads of all of us never in the heads of some kind of centralized Facebook community or, or so forth so that's the kinds of things we're working on without memories if memories wisp away then you have folks who make extremely bad decisions and we learn nothing uh, by it and our search for truth our slow stumbling towards the truth uh, is severely handicapped and that was your science moment